So I should have felt that way before. I was much too slack in feeling secure and safe. Of course, Jodak would know about everything which had to do with the family and with Aunt Crydek and Uncle Stita. I'm such an idiot. How am I ever going to be a proper queen? Frank, damn it. They really chose the wrong person for the job. At least Jodak's personal skipping journal made up for any discomfort I felt at being disillusioned of safety. I couldn't wait to get into that. But first, we had some chocolate to inspect. We were on our way there, and I was lost in my own mind when... This is Nidak, my adventure. Written down in a better way than I can tell it. Episode 49 Frank Dammit The Quinn jostled Nadek, Melia and Miralda all over the padded benches. The two men pulling the glorified rickshaw didn't seem to care much about making it a smooth ride. Nadek had wanted to get a one strongman drawn Quinn, but Melia had gently explained the law about having one strong man per two passengers. Apparently, it had become compulsory after a few too many accidents of strong men overestimating themselves, causing them injuries. Nedek vaguely remembered Aiba mentioning it during the law induction. Because it was a two puller, the Quinn itself was larger with a pair of benches facing each other, instead of one bench looking towards the strongman. Nidak heard the men squabble as they jogged along. She wondered if their discussion caused their abrupt movements. Her mind wandered, and she found herself lost in empty thoughts when Miralda pulled away the front curtain. She grimaced apologetically towards Nidak. One of the men asked for it. It seems they want to talk. My ladies, the man on the right spoke loudly to them, not looking back. Might you be willing to help us out with a moral discussion we are having? Of course. Why not? Nidak's reply came at the same time Melia said, No. Nidak snorted and turned to Melia. It's still a long way to the chocolate production, right? Melia nodded with reluctance. We might as well keep ourselves entertained. Go on, she yelled out to the strongman. The same man continued. Well, I'm certain you've heard of the fire in the sixth squarion. We merely can't agree on... Wait, Nidak shouted. What fire? I do not know what has happened. I have only just arrived. The men gave each other a look. They obviously didn't believe her. But who were they to go against a lady, especially one as properly dressed as her, and with two servants? An in-court fire. The fire was so intense, it burned down many buildings around it. Now, mouthfuls, it... What in? Nidak and Melia asked at the same time. The man who'd been speaking blew out, letting his lips flap around to produce a sound. Nida held herself from chuckling at how much it sounded like a horse. I think it was called the fictional flagon, wasn't it? The other man chimed in, in a high voice at odds with his impressive figure. Mm, could be, could be, the first man replied. The original dragon. Was that it? Nidak felt her heart sink in her shoes. Her chest grew heavy and her cheeks taut. Yes, yes, that was the one. The second man confirmed it had been Nidak's previous inn. It seemed it had been a perfect idea to leave in the middle of the night. Foolish, foolish man, she thought towards the innkeeper. Oh, my lady, do not worry. It is contained now. The fire still smolders last I heard, but it won't spread and shouldn't kindle again. I did see the wreckage of the inn where it all started. 
Nothing is left. Nothing but a charred square pile, vaguely resembling a wooden base structure. You know, I am a big proponent of a new way of building, you know, using as little wood as possible and sticking to a lot of stone. This only proves why. The inn was the only building left in that street still constructed with mostly wood. I would bet it wouldn't have burned as heavily if it had been one of the stone buildings. Because even though the ones around it did burn, their damage is much less. So you... I think that is quite enough, Chikra, the other man interjected, the one who'd spoken first. Apologies, my ladies. My brother does like to go on. He is a quiet type, but once he starts, and especially if it's about buildings. Either way, what do you ladies think? I believe the fire had been an accident, probably something in the kitchen which went wrong. But my checker here believes it had been started on purpose. And that is why it burned so fiercely. The man said a few more things, but Nadak zoned out. There was no question in her mind what had happened. It certainly was no accident. She hoped the innkeeper and his servants hadn't gotten hurt, or worse. Nadak didn't mingle much in the following discussion. She didn't have to. Milia and Miraldo defended the purposely lit opinion well enough for the three of them. The man on the right, the one who had started it all, never changed his mind. He stubbornly kept to his own opinion, no matter what evidence or technically just claim the others gave. Nedak thought it especially stupid, knowing his brother's knowledge about buildings. When they stopped in front of a large building, the curtain had been drawn shut again, and stubborn silence filled the air in front of the quin. Jaka apologized for his brother's behavior and offered to refund them part of the trip. That elicited at least a grunt from the other. Nedak refused and let them keep the money. The building stretched multiple meters to either side of them, on the outside constructed of a long row of simple columns supporting an overarching ceiling. The covered area stood open, the space in between the columns easy to walk through. In awe, Nedak did so. It revealed the covered promenade, the wall across from the columns, the actual wall of the building, appeared full of drawings and paintings. Along the promenade, Nedak saw many indications of people having their sleeping places there. This was Farang's idea. Milia's voice held a measure of pride. He noticed people were sleeping outside, even in the rain. He spoke to Mr. Skradek and gained approval to allow them under the covered promenade. This building used to be an art collection house, but they moved to another place. As a tribute to that, Mr. Skrydek and Master Steedem allowed any of the city's artists to add a piece to the wall when they bought the building. That's nice of them, Nedak acknowledged. Come on, let's go in. Milia fidgeted with her fingers, the nervousness Nedak had noticed during the Quinn ride suddenly peeking. Mistress, she took a deep breath. I want you to know, he could have let someone else pretend to be him to address you. But he did not. He wanted to be honest, because he believes you deserve it. And he is right about that. We spoke about this many times. Please, mistress, keep that in mind. He is not a bad man. He wants to make things right. What are you talking about? Even though Nedak had no idea what Melia meant, a feeling of dread settled over her, prickling her skin and raising the hairs on her arms. You will see, mistress. Please, remember my words. She pushed one side of the double door open. The smell of chocolate wafted in Nedak's face. She only now realized it had been there all along. No walls can keep divinity out. 
but now it assaulted her nostrils ten times as much. The intensity almost overturned it from sweet, delicious heaven to an unbearable overload of sensation, enough to send a sense of smell into a panic. The room they entered obviously functioned as an entry hall. Nidak reminded herself that her aunt had received the method and recipe for chocolate making from her mother, which meant all of the procedures and ways of working would be similar to Earth's, including hygiene. The man at a desk looked up and smiled broadly. Why, hello, Milia! We have been expecting you and your guests. He made a deep bow. Welcome all. I will call Farenk. Please take a seat. He pointed towards a row of comfortable-looking chairs against the wall opposite from him. Exactly like on earth, Nedek thought. The man reached behind him and pulled a tassel hanging from a thick cord. It didn't take long for the door next to the desk to open. If Nedek hadn't been sitting, she probably would have collapsed to the floor from all the strength, leaving her legs. Impossible. The whispered word barely came out. Farang smiled at her. The same smile he'd always smiled when he knew he'd done something she didn't like, but still wanted her to keep liking him, especially paired with hunched shoulders and a tucked chin. He knew she used to think it too cute to stay upset. Nedek had always disliked the way it manipulated her, while still working to his advantage. Frank! I... what... how... She squeezed her eyes and shook her head. Not this as well. How many more emotional punches would she be able to bear until she snapped completely, until she broke and couldn't find her way back out of it? Not this. This couldn't be real. He disappeared not long after her parents' funeral. She sometimes thought something had happened to him, too. No, that's not true, she murmured. She opened her eyes, a fire awakened. I wanted to believe something happened. But in truth, I did always assume you just left me. Too much of a coward to deal with the griefing me. But you're here? How? Why? Frank Dam! I still curse on your name. Never been able to rid myself of that stupid habit. The smile which had been leaving him returned. You do? But the various. He swallowed as he saw her face grow dark. I suppose when you do it these days, it's no longer just a jest to avoid saying God, but a genuine curse. All right. He clapped his hands together. Melia, do you want to take your friend here to the packing station? Perhaps you ladies might be able to find something to do there. Nidak, please, if you will follow me, we have some matters to discuss. You have been listening to Nidak. Chapter 49 Frank Dammit Narrated, adventured and lived through by myself, Nedek. Written in the better way that I can tell it by Astrid Jeff. Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. Find us on Twitter at Astrid Jeff and at Nedek and Kitty. Psst. Hey. Hi. It's me. No, not Nedek. It's Astrid. Just wanted to say hello to all the new listeners and welcome to the story, even though we're nearing the end. Don't worry, we still have quite a few episodes to go. And hello to Patrick and Cheyenne. I see you. This story is a free audiobook in podcast format 
and it's nearing 80,000 words, which is awesome. Proper novel. It's free for everyone to listen and read on my website, estherjeff.com. If you'd like to support me, of course, the best way is to share the podcast around, rate and review. But now, there's also the option for a small donation. The platform is called Buy Me A Coffee, but in reality for me it's more of Buy Me A Homemade Soy Matcha Latte, because I don't drink coffee. Bad writer. Bad, bad writer. Every small contribution helps pay for the hosting costs of the podcast. If you can spare as little as $3, find me on buymeacoffee.com slash astrichef. A-S-T-R-I-D-J-E-F Everyone who does gets a little shout-out in the following episode. Thank you so much for listening, and see you next week. Because it was a two-puller, because it was a two-puller, the quin itself was larger, with a pair of benches. She grimaced. Now let's give that a different accent. The man who'd been spe- but Need a curler. What's that? <laughs> because even though the ones around it did burn, their damage is much much. <laughs> because even though the ones around it did burn, their damage is much. There was no question in her mind what had happened. She hoped the innkeeper and his servants didn't get hurt, or worse, hadn't gotten hurt. <laughs> Nedek didn't mind. He stubbornly kept to his own opinion. He stubbornly kept to his own opinion, no matter what. Nedek refused and let them keep the money. The building stretched more. Bloody hell! The building stretched. The build. Uh. That was Farang's idea. The fuck. This was Farang's idea. What the fuck? This was Farang's idea. Fuck, I keep changing the voice. Nila Galan. Mila fidgeted with her fingers. The nervosity. The nervosity. Nervosity. Nervousness. Sounds better. Is that even a word? It is now. Prickling her skin and raising the hairs on her heart. The hairs on her arms? <laughs> what? the fuck prickling her skin and raising the air prickling her skin and raising the hairs on her fuck why is this so difficult always has to be at least one sentence please remember the birds the birds the birds are happy that it rained no <clears throat> from all the strength leaving her legs from all the strength leaving her legs. Why am I saying her legs? Such a funny way.